In this lecture, we're going to review the skull. Here we see the frontal bone, the nasal bone, the zygomatic, the maxilla, and the mandible. Here is the supraorbital margin. This is a supraorbital foramen, and this is a supraorbital notch. Now remember, sometimes during development, uh, we might get an actual foramen that forms. Otherwise, uh, if it's incomplete, we're going to have to call that a notch. So just kind of use common sense. If it's a hole, it's going to be a foramen. If it's not a hole, if it's a little nick, we're going to refer to that as a notch. Now below the eye we see a hole. Again, that's going to be a foramen. Um, the eye socket itself is known as the orbit, and this hole is inferior to the orbit, so that is going to be called the infraorbital foramen. Now looking inside of his nose, we see a couple of structures here. We've got at the bottom the vomer, and above the vomer we have the um, perpendicular plate of the ethmoid. And off to the sides we have the inferior and middle nasal conch. Looking at a lateral view, we have the frontal bone, the parietal bone, the occipital bone, the temporal bone, here is the greater wing of the sphenoid, here is the zygomatic, in the corner of the eye here we have the lacrimal bone, here's the nasal bone, the maxilla, and the mandible. Now looking at sutures, we have the coronal suture, the squamous or squamosal suture, and the lambda or lambdoidal suture. Some structures that we can see here are the external auditory canal, the mastoid process, the styloid process, here is the nasal spine, uh, this right here is going to be the mandibular condyle, the mandibular angle, and this part right here sticking up is the coronoid process. Now don't forget we have a conoid, coronoid, and coracoid processes. This here is a coronoid process. Imagine you're eating something and you bite into something hard. Now your jaw hurts, and boy are you annoyed. You're not just annoyed, your coronoid. Okay, so I hope that helps you remember. Down here along the chin we have a foramen, and this is going to be the mental foramen. And then along the teeth, and again if you rub your fingers along your gums you feel these ridges. These ridges are the alveolar processes. And we have the alveolar processes of the maxilla and the alveolar processes of the mandible. Looking at a top view, uh, we see again the coronal suture and the sagittal suture. Here's the nasal bone, the maxilla, and looking down into the eye socket, we find the nasolacrimal canal. And on this view, we're going to go ahead and enlarge it so that we can see kind of up near the, um, the teeth, the, the palate area. And uh, again, these teeth are the incisors, so this hole right here is the incisive fossa, or incisive foramen. This portion right here is the uh, palatine process 
of the maxilla. And this right here is the actual palatine bone. Now we're looking through the nose from the back, from behind. So all of this is going to be vomer. These structures are the lateral and medial pterygoid processes. Okay, moving down a little bit, this is where we're going to find some of the holes, the foramen, uh, that can sometimes give a little bit of difficulty in learning. But um, if you just remember, you're looking at these foramen and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I'm at a loss. L-O-S. And that stands for foramen lacerum, foramen oval. See, it's a very oval looking hole. So foramen oval and foramen spinosum. It's a smaller hole. I picture taking a porcupine spine and poking a little hole into it. And so that's the spinosum. So again, foramen lacerum, oval, and spinosum. So L-O-S. And again, the same on the other side, L-O-S, only going backward. Now, just below the foramen spinosum is the carotid canal, where the carotid artery travels through. And below the carotid canal is the jugular foramen. And actually, we can see more here, the jugular fossa. If we were to tip the skull, we could actually see the foramen itself. And again, that's where the jugular vein travels through. Other structures we see here are the occipital condyles, uh, the foramen magnum. It's a little hard to see because they're kind of broken off and we're looking at them kind of head on. But these are the styloid processes. And right here are some indentations. Again, an indentation are referred to as fossas. And this is where the mandibular condyles fit into. So these are going to be called the mandibular fossas. Okay, mandibular fossa. Now this is looking inside the skull. The top has been taken off. The calvarium has been removed. And if we look... Um, Oh, kind of a little more at the, the central area. Um, up at the top here, we see the cribriform plate. Cribriform actually means, um, it actually means full of holes. Okay. And these little holes are uh, holes for the uh, olfactory nerves. So we're going to call these little holes, which are foramen, uh, a singular uh, foramen is a foramina. We're going to call these olfactory foramina. Okay. And if we look uh, right here, this little structure that sticks up is the cristigalli. Now this area right here is the cella tersica. Cella ter tersica actually translates out to be Turkish saddle. And uh, it reminded the early anatomists of uh, the saddles uh, used in Turkey, which were very deep saddles, had very high fronts and very high backs. And so speaking of back, here's the back of the saddle. Another term for back is dorsum. And saddle is cella. So it's the dorsum cella. So again, the cella tersica and the dorsum cella. This structure right here is going to be the lesser wing of the sphenoid. And down below is the greater wing of the sphenoid. And again, we find these same holes. And again, you might be at a loss. L-O-S. Foramen lacerum or lacerum. Foramen oval. And foramen spinosum. And again, right under foramen spinosum, we're going to have the carotid canal and the jugular canal, or jugular foramen, I should say. 
So again, foramen lacerum, foramen ovale, foramen spinosum, carotid canal, jugular foramen. And it's a little difficult to see, uh, but uh, we have a couple of little holes right here and here. And this is the foramen rotundum. So if you have a skull model, uh, all you have to do is tip it forward a little bit, and you can see the uh, foramen rotundum. Uh, this structure right here, which kind of looks lumpy and rocky, is actually called the petrous portion. Petrous means rock. So this is the petrous portion of the temporal bone. And again, we see the foramen magnum. Looking in the eye socket again, in the orbit, um, if you remember, we have a, a uh, mnemonic. Um, if you haven't seen the video yet, uh, check out the video on um, learning the bones of the eye socket. Uh, but our mnemonic is Frank, Zappa, and the mothers for less, L-E-S. And those bones that make up the eye socket are going to be the frontal bone, the zygomatic, the maxilla, the lacrimal, the ethmoid, and the sphenoid. Looking at other structures in the orbit, we have the optic foramen or optic canal, the supraorbital fissure, and the infraorbital fissure. From this view, we can see once again the supraorbital foramen on this side and supraorbital notch on this side. We can see the superior and inferior orbital fissures. And here are the infraorbital foramen. And looking in his nose, the lower portion will be the vomer. And the upper portion will be the perpendicular plate of the ethmoid. And here we have the inferior nasal conch. And if we have an inferior nasal conch, this must be what? Whoops, if you said superior nasal conch, that's not correct. Remember, we can't see the superior nasal conch unless we saw the skull in half. This is the middle nasal conch. So don't forget that. Uh, inferior nasal conch and s uh, middle nasal conch. See, I almost said it. So inferior nasal conch and middle nasal conch. The superior cannot be seen from this view.